<clears throat> hey guys, I'm Island Turtle. Welcome to Balmy Spirit. This is the weekly intuitive astrology reading for March 13th to March 19th. Hope you guys are doing awesome. I'm actually recording this on March 11th. I feel like today's been a really amazing, crazy kind of a day. I don't know if you guys have been feeling the same thing. Um, I did do a live yesterday. For those guys who are watching on Patreon, obviously, um, if you're watching us on YouTube, it was not yesterday, it was on the 10th, uh, so go ahead and check that out. <coughs> Sorry, it wasn't a live. I downloaded it and then uploaded it to post because if I record lives, the algorithm doesn't populate them and it's kind of annoying. Mm. For my newbies, hello, welcome. Thank you for checking us out. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. I'm gonna close that window in a minute. I just wanted to kind of air out the room for, for a bit. Um, that's always distracting me, sorry. I'm not in my body. <laughs> not in my body. Um, if you guys watch the video, you'll know. It's like there's been a, there's been a lot going on. Um, but those of you guys who are new, welcome. The way that this works, I go over the astrology for the week. I give you my two cents on it. I also do channelings as well. And then I go ahead and do a collective message and then I do readings for the elements, okay? Um, everything should be timestamped if you're not aware. Okay, so the week that we, whoa, 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 whoa timestamp. That's why I have a pen. <laughs> I'm glad, glad I caught myself. Uh, don't mind me. Uh, collective and then elements. Sorry guys, just give me one hot minute. Okay. Okay, so this week, we actually have a lot of continued energy. Sorry, now that all of a sudden I'm distracted by the noise outside. No, I'm going to close this. So we have a lot of the same energy that's carrying us through this week. And this week is officially the last week of post-shadow Mars retrograde. And a lot of us have been very, very excited for that to be over. It's also the last week before we move into this this you know next level reality, walking through the gateway, that portal essentially, which I... which. <clears throat> <clears throat> which when we talk about the following week to so the week that I'm talking about will be also coinciding um, with energies that are blending into the spring equinox as well that's happening on March 20th, which will also signal the start of Aries season in tropic Western astrology. Um, this week, like I said, a lot of continued themes and I'm going to talk about that, but I really want to mention the week after that, like the 20th to the 26th. <laughs> Shift time, shift time. So we're going to be in a whole different energy, man. We're going to be in Aries season. We're going to have a new moon Aries, like right around the time of spring uh, equinox. I think it's actually on the 21st versus the 20th. Uh, what else is happening? Ceres is retrograding into Virgo, which means at some point it will start working with Orcus. And I'm going to talk about Orcus too, because it pertains to this week as well. And I've been talking about Orcus. If you're new, hang out. I'm going to talk about it again. Uh, we also have Mars moving into Cancer, even also like more solidification of moving away from this Mars Gemini energy. Huge, huge shifts. Okay. But that's, that's the following week. But let's talk about this week let's talk about the night the uh, 13th to the 19th okay uh we do have venus moving into taurus we do have pluto touching aquarius uh we also have uh mercury moving into aries as well going on this week and like i said also the ending of mars post shadow which the last day will be the 14th like very much in the beginning of the week okay now the continued themes of what we're dealing with here, you know, all of this like Aries, Chiron energy working with Jupiter and Vesta as it's also working with Pallas Athena, which this week is also working with Uranus and Orcus. Don't get too caught up on the words if you're new to astrology or new to my channel. All that essentially means is that it's referring to this energy where we can really start to see and understand victimization our own victimization and as i was like writing my notes for this week they were giving me more downloads that this really is hitting healers very hard not in a way where it's like hard like not like that i mean like intensely it's very strongly affecting healers light workers energy workers um also mothers too i don't know why that just came up interesting well that makes sense i guess uh but anyway 
really affecting these specific groups of people. And, and that's not to say it's negative. I think it's a very beautiful, positive experience. Now, what is this doing for us? It's helping us to understand our own victimization, understand the cycle of victimization, right? Hurt people, hurt people. Um, but also understanding how the effects of our own victimization have really held us up when it comes to really following what, what it is we want, our desire, our purpose, which even equates to our blueprints, right? It's like really, really big stuff. Hi, Bubby. He's been he's been all over me. I've been loving it. He is a Pisces. This month is this month is his birthday, um, and he he definitely has been very like gushy gushy gooey. Anyway, so that's energy that we've been in for a while, and then this is like I feel like this is actually one of the final weeks where we, we're really experiencing it in a very like strong energetic sense, and it's going to start to pitter out. Even Vesta by the end of the week starts to get out of the range of aspecting with Jupiter and Chiron. For those of you guys who don't know the aspects, Chiron is conjunct Jupiter and Vesta. All three of them are working together, and they're also square Pallas Athena, which has been in Cancer. That Pallas Athena Cancer energy, it's empathic warrior, it's matriarchal leadership. It also is the energy of home, too. So like home, homesickness, finding home within the self. That's been a huge theme of, the, of all of this, of what we're um, clearing as well. We've been going through a big karmic clearing, um, so some of you guys have been experiencing that. And I talked about... <clears throat> in the video that I did yesterday. I forget what I titled it. I think I literally titled it like light worker message. Blah, 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 blah. So <laughs> something, something, something. <clears throat> Excuse me. That we've been also, uh, some of us have been going through this phase. Going from a phase of autumn to winter for all of us to meet in spring to jump. Spring equinox, right? Um, this is coinciding with the gateway and all of that. But the difference between being in the autumn phase to the winter phase. The winter phase feels very Piscean. It feels very like, it just feels so quiet and so deep into the void, so deep into ourselves, so deep into the interconnectedness of all things that we are everywhere and nowhere at once. Like really, really connecting to the the emptiness of, of, of existence, consciousness, right? And within that, a lot of us are also doing some timeline work, energy work. Um, and some of us are also doing, um, as credence to to a friend of mine who's also been channeling a lot of this stuff too, um, he was bringing up soul retrieval. And I was like, oh yeah, duh, that makes so much sense. That's so right. Um, also doing some soul retrieval work at that. So that's a lot of what's going on with people who are in this winter phase. And then anyone who's in autumn phase making their way to winter phase, it's like it's doing this like kind of karmic clearing. And then once it's cleared, you're in this like empty, clean slate and you can sit in the void. You can sit in winter and hold the space for people who are still catching up for all of us to jump for spring equinox. Right. So a lot of energy is continuing this week is basically all I'm saying. Uh, Uranus working with Orcus is part of that karmic clearing as well. Now this week, Pallas Athena is actually sextile Uranus. So Uranus, uh, you know, causes events, changes, but it's also so, a lot of times um, changes that we want to initiate ourselves, how we want to be liberated, how we want to be freed. Now with the support of Orcus, that is in the form of also karmic balancing as well, or even just balancing energies and balancing forces. It's also a healing energy that comes from Orcus. It's very Plutonian, but it's got its own little flavor to it. Now, since Uranus and Orcus are both supporting Pallas Athena in this, all of this energy that I'm talking about right now is really circulating a lot around Chiron and Pallas Athena, um, where it is about liberating that liberating Pallas Athena, liberating cancer, liberating the feminine, liberating empathic warriors, liberating compassion, liberating love, all of that stuff, liberating home. There's a whole message in there. To not only find home within the self, but for, for a good number of light workers out there too, also being able to, to really fully anchor and cement into the energy of home here. You can call it New Earth if you want to, but it is part of that jump, right? It's part of that jump. It's really beautiful energy, actually. So that has just continued this week. <laughs> That's continued this week. Um, and of course, as you're experiencing this individually with your own victimization. So bringing it down from the like, you know, macrocosmic level of all things, bringing it down to the individual level of like, we're still humans living this like human experience. Uh, you're, you're seeing how you've been getting in your own way, basically, um, how it's also been contributing or tied into the energy of what is home? Have you ever felt at home? And any themes around shadowy cancer energy, like addictions, codependencies, attachments, emotional manipulation, um, devouring parents that just came up actually. 
narcissistic relationships, all of that stuff, right? And how, you know, your own sense of power and your own sense of self has really been suppressed and you're really liberating that and, and understanding um, how, like, what that is for you. What is your sacred flame? What is your sacred purpose? What what makes you thirst for life and get up in the morning and be excited to live and then following suit? So that's more the individual level. Now, something else that's going on this week that I actually was talking about in that video. Um, if anyone doesn't mind posting the link below, I'd really appreciate it. Again, you should be able to find it really easily if you just go to the homepage. It should just be there under videos. <clears throat> excuse me, but um, I talked about this where there's there was a, I was also channeling a level of discernment that's happening where, and this is like, I think coming in with the winter for people who are in the winter phase, who are in like the holding space phase, like in the void, where you're actually being able to see the ego a lot clearer than you could before 1044 and I looked up at the camera. That's just a huge number right now. Um, the fours, especially fours are huge right now for the collective. Um, but being able to discern and understand the ego for what it is and even like observe it from out, like observe you from outside of you, observe your own ego and observe when your ego's chitter chattering away and you're like, oh, quiet down over there. And you can even observe this in other people. That's definitely coming through this week. Uh, we have Sun, Mars, and Neptune working together and Sun will also be working with Mercury. The Sun and Neptune are conjunct in Pisces and they are both square Mars this week. Um, that Mars square Neptune energy, man, that is like lethargy all day, but there's more to it than that and I'll talk about it in a minute. Um, but the Sun is also conjunct Mercury. Now the conjunction of Neptune and Mercury playing off of the Sun this brings this like level of discernment, right? Because we're talking about Mercury, which is already like, you know, the mind and communication, but Neptune, Neptune is bringing that intuitive component, the intuitive Piscean looking at things from a bigger perspective, but Mercury also helps to really ground that, uh, to really, really ground it in a way where it's like, you don't like you don't have to get carried away with it because sometimes Neptune can be a little finicky with that, right? So it's not getting lost in all the information you're able to perceive, you're actually able to really utilize it, compartmentalize it, not be overwhelmed by it, and really um, use divine wisdom as well. But I kept getting the ego because of the square to Mars. Now having Sun and Neptune uh, square Mars can bring up a lot of power struggle issues and power dynamics and conflicts and things of that nature. Now, if you wanna look at this versus masculine and feminine, there is a way to look at it that way, and I'll talk about it. I'm giving you all just different ways to look at it however you want to look at it. I just want to, I want to give different ways of looking at all these things so that more people can understand because everybody I feel like needs different words to, to understand certain things and different like visualizations and what have you. But anyway, blah, blah, blah. the square to Mars energy. Yeah, you can look at this as masculine versus feminine and Venus is playing a role this week too. And I will talk about that. I think it's fine. If it goes off again, I'll put on do not disturb. You're gonna see, you're gonna see certain people really grabbing, trying to take, trying to take, trying to take, trying to exert their power. Anybody who's doing that is most likely doing that out of some sort of insecurity or fear or karmic clearing that they're going through in that present moment. Let them do it, don't get caught up in it, right? Practice that higher mind, divine wisdom, that discernment of really being very much connected to self and being very much connected to, I don't even know how else to say it, like, within and without all things interconnectedness right that vastness um and how and being able to practice that detachment <laughs> that's so crucial being able to practice that detachment and observing that from afar and not letting that affect you if mercury wasn't playing with the sun right now i would say neptune working with the sun well they're, they're both square mars it could really be easy to fall prey to that and get sucked into drama but you don't have to get sucked into drama if you do it's probably just a sign of something that needs to be cleared or released on your end or observed from your end observed acknowledged released processed etc from your end of things. Um, there is also this theme this week, and I'll talk about it more when I talk about Venus, because Venus and Pluto are doing some stuff. Uh, this huge theme that's coming in of really breaking and detaching from the programming of war, the programming of war and fighting. And I think this is not a coincidence that this is gonna be happening right before the week where we have spring equinox right before the week where we go on the Aries season, right before the week we have the first new moon in Aries, the second new moon in Aries will be an eclipse, 
Mm -hmm. Not shocking. And then come this summer, the nodes will switch into Aries and Libra. It's perfect timing to set us up for these lessons with North Node Aries, South Node Libra period of time. Now in Vedic, I do believe it's moving into Pisces Virgo, if I'm not mistaken. That's still going to coincide beautifully with everything that's going on. Now, sorry, just a little tidbit, a little note. When I'm not in my body, I talk a lot because I'm very like. <laughs> anyway, uh, when it comes to astrology and the different viewpoints of astrology, the different schools of study of astrology, my personal belief, it's just my own truth, I'm not saying there's this is a universal truth, is that there's a little truth in all of it, right? But they're, they're all correlated. It's like they're all looking at the same shit, right? They're all looking at the stars. <laughs> they're all looking at the stars. Now, <clears throat> Are there slight differences in saying, no, it's in Aries, no, it's in Pisces? Sure, yes. Um, will you find similar themes as to what's going on? Yes, you will. Just is just my observation. But coming back to the main point, this is perfect timing and setting us up for summertime for when the nodes switch and we get on that ride, we get on that roller coaster of really understanding and learning Aries. What is really the sign of the I am? What is the sign of the self? What is the sign of, of leader, initiator, and in some ways, destroyer? Some people say that Scorpio is more like the, the destroyer sign with the two like Mars signs, but they both are. They both are. And destroying is just another form of creation. It's you can't have one without the other. You need both. Um, oh, I just got pulled into like Hindu pantheon, but we're, we're not going there. We're not going there. <laughs> It's a lot right now. I want to stay on topic. Anyway, um, these themes of war are going to be coming up this week, and it, it really is to break and detach from the programming of what that is, of what power is, what power dynamics and struggle are, and this like taking, taking, taking. And there is going to be a lot of associate. You can you can associate it with the masculine if you want to. It's perceptional. There's a reason I chose red today. By the way, I forgot to mention. It called to me after I did my notes and I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Passion and the root chakra, right? Being very grounded. And then that's also where we take action from as well. It's also where we feel fear, feel fear and insecurity. Uh, it ties in really well this week, but coming back. So don't be surprised if that comes up, but this is a chance to really exercise that higher mind, to really exercise that that high priest, high priestess, god, goddess energy and tools that you have all acquired to not get sucked into the bullshit and just see it for what it is, that it's just clearing. That's all it is. Don't get sucked into it. All right. Now, that being said, let's talk about Pluto. Pluto is in Capricorn, 29 degrees. It is going to move into Aquarius, zero degrees, but it's just going to touch it. All right. It's going to retrograde at some point really soon, actually. It's not going to really fully cement into Aquarius until November 2024. And then, yes, it'll be there for 20 years. But just know that we're still going to experience Pluto Capricorn lessons and energies because it is we're finishing out <clears throat> those cycles by really embracing this newly evolved way of looking through the through the world through Capricorn lens like right because we've evolved we've mastered that lesson now because Pluto has been in Capricorn but anyway coming back Pluto is going to be square Venus this week yeah but Venus is also going to be sextile Saturn Venus is in Aries it's going to move into Taurus this week Saturn's in Pisces and it's like zero to one degree this whole week now that sextile Saturn is actually a really nice saving grace because Pluto sextile Venus excuse me Pluto square Venus also brings a power dynamics and war. So you see where I'm going with this. Both Mars and Venus, masculine, feminine, um, are going to be bringing up themes, programs around war, power struggles, power dynamics, control issues, conflict. Now, I'm not saying that it needs to be chaotic, right? Because this is also a week where we really do understand these lessons and we're ready to jump. We're ready to, to move through the gateway. We can observe this from the higher mind and understand this is just the program breaking down. This is just the program leaving and heading that way, <laughs> right? That's all it is. Now, if you have any relationships where there's still, you know, a lot of these themes and programs running, they're probably gonna fall apart and you're gonna go, whoa, that was crazy. 
If you have very healthy relationships, it might come up just to clear and then it actually might help to transform or even um, grow any relationships that you currently have. Can this also bring about um, new relationships? Potentially, um, I'm not gonna say that they can be long-term, but the sextile to Saturn will help you to see that and also discern that as well. Because when Venus is sextile Saturn, it really emphasizes the importance of authentic, serious, devoted relationships. Now, because Saturn is in Pisces, it's also really going to emphasize any relationships that are about your spiritual development and growth as a person, spiritual relationships in general, um, also relationships around mentors, mentees, things of that nature, or any kind of spiritual work with a lot of you guys watching, you will fall into that category. So even if Pluto square Venus brings up a lot of this like conflict, power struggles, especially, and I really want to say, especially towards people who are empathetic, light workers, healers, that Pallas Athena, can Pallas Athena Cancer energy, anything that's been against those kinds of people, like in terms of all these themes, you this is a time to be liberated. It's liberating that from any, any sort of patriarchal, dominating, snatching, tyrannical people or energies that have really suppressed that part of you or suppressed people who fit in that boat. Now, the sextile of Saturn will also show you who really is of quality as well. So yeah, if new people come in for your come into your life this week, you're gonna have such a strong level of discernment. You'll know who's who. You'll know. Like there shouldn't be any seven of cups this week. And if there are, it's probably not gonna last long. Okay. Um oh, was that it? <laughs> Sometimes I get to talking and talking and talking, and then I'm like, oh wait, that was it. Oh yeah, that was all I wanted to say. Oh, no, you know what? I take that back. So towards the end of the week, here, here are some interesting things that I do want to mention. So towards the end of the week, Pluto was not done. Pluto will actually start to uh, go sextile with sun, with the sun and with Mercury. And I got magician. That's <laughs> what I heard. Magician. That's magician energy. That's magician energy. Pluto and the sun get together. And it's like you can feel the power that brews inside of yourself. You're very in tune with your own level of magic. You're really in tune with your own level of capability and skill set to do what you want to get done to achieve what you want make things happen shift things transform things pluto it's very magical especially when mercury gets into that because mercury gives you even deeper understanding of, of all of these things about yourself and what you can do can it also lean towards manipulative skills yes but i don't like that word manipulative because i feel like it just has a negative connotation but the ability to transmute things and shift things to your, to your benefit or to the benefit of everybody? Yes. And I want to say to the benefit of everybody because Pluto is going to be touching Aquarius at this time and also the sun will still be in Pisces. It's like, you know what I mean? Um, anyway, so that's that's magic. Great manifestation vibes there. The other thing, ooh, as I said that, I felt a really weird pain in my right ankle. Um, hmm, masculine energy. Anyway, Venus. Now, towards the end of the week, Venus is actually going to be conjunct the North Node in Taurus. Yeah. And is also going to be conjunct Juno. This will totally open the door. And this is all in Taurus energy. So think Taurus energy with Venus, Juno, and the North Node. For those who don't know, Juno is a asteroid. Uh, Juno is protection of women, partnership. It, Juno really helps helps to stand up for, for everything that we're basically liberating right now to stand up for feminine, to stand up for all, to stand up for community, to stand up for what's right, to stand up for compassion, um, empathy. Empathy is at the core of this, right? But it does also speak of partnerships and unions. And with Venus at play, that's really going to highlight that. Ow, what the hell? That's... Mm. Sorry, guys, hold on a second. Ooh. I think something's just clearing as I'm talking about it. I'm talking about transmuting, right? Whew. Just feeling that leave my foot. Anyway, Venus working with Juno in the North Node in Taurus. Taurus is Earth Venus energy, right? So it is about home, creature comforts, 
how we how we feel taken care of in a physical sense, right? It can even be aesthetics and things like that. Um, really prioritizing like what makes you feel good in the physical. But this is also about partnerships too, and like partnerships that can bring that to other people. So business relationships are gonna tie into this. People you wanna share a home with is gonna tie into this, or even improving relationships within the home is also gonna tie into this as well. Now with it working with the North Node, it's about unlocking for further advancement, right? It is about future forward. It might even be like a little feeling of like fate or destiny tied into that as well, especially if you're meeting anybody this week or have any changes with anybody this week, that again, you live with or want to live with, that you work with or want to work with. Um, yeah, so just something to note about that, okay? Okay, I will tell you, I think a lot of this energy this week is peaking on the 16th. Like right before St. Patrick's Day, around St. Patrick's Day. Right? That's on the 17th, I think it is, yeah. Um, so yeah, now as far as where to look in your charts for to understand how this energy is going to affect you. So the first thing I would say, Pisces and Aries, you guys are going to definitely feel this energy the most. Um, mutable signs. Yeah, so I would say Pisces, Aries, mutable signs, because Gemini is playing a huge role, because Mars is creating a lot of aspects and Mars is in Gemini. Um, Taurus, for sure. Now, if you have any personal planets in any of these signs, and specifically with Pisces, 20 to 29 degrees, um, Aries, 10 to 15 degrees and 25 to 29 degrees, Taurus, 0 to 5 degrees, 10 to 15 degrees, Gemini, 25 degrees, but 20 to 29 should also feel that as well. You're just going to like really feel the intensity of the energies, okay? Um, now, where, how to like look at your houses for where this is affecting you. So look at wherever you have Pisces, 20, 29 degrees. Again, this is based off your rising sign. So like house 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? Um, Pisces, 20 to 29 degrees. Aries, I would look at the whole house actually, but again, those particular ranges, there's a lot going on. 10 to 15, 25 to 29. Taurus, 0 to 5, 10 to 15. You can argue 0 to 15 if you wanted to. Um, and then Gemini, 25 degree point, but 20 to 29 for sure. Okay, where a lot of this is going down. I would really pay particular attention to where, well, I mean, it's all important. <laughs> It's all important. Um, Gemini and Aries, I'd pay, I'd pay really close attention to just because that's where Mars and Venus will be. And it seems to be a lot about um, breaking down it, like and moving away from these programs, clearing these programs of war, power conflict, but specifically between like masculine and feminine to really balance that out and clean the slate right, between masculine and feminine, but it's about liberating that feminine aspect that's been oppressed and repressed and victimized. Again, this whole victimization thing. Um, why are men's rights coming in here? Oh, that's a whole other video. <laughs> that's a whole other video. I'm not talking about that today. Uh, they, they've been having me, so, okay. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you guys experience this. Where spirit has you dabble, like almost like tapping into like a distortion or tapping into a collective, tapping into a reality, even if it's not yours, you just kind of go like, let me peek at that. Mm, okay, got it. Like, you know what I mean? They've been having me do that. Um, men's rights. I'm not talking about that right now. I'm like, I, I'm like, oh, I can feel it. I can, I can, I can feel. <laughs> I, I can feel the square Mars already getting all agitated. They're really encouraging me to talk about it. Um, just like most things like that, that come out into mainstream awareness or consciousness, it's, it's facilitating clearing, but there is there distortion? Yeah. Is there also, is this also utilized as a tool for distraction? Yeah. Is there also some valid clearing that's happening? I think I mentioned this, but yes. It's very interesting, complicated. But anyway, I wanna move into the collective message for the week. Uh, so let me timestamp this. Hmm. 
<laughs> oh, okay. So moving into the message for the week, 13th to the 19th, 13th or 19th. Uh, what deck wants to come out and play? Mm. Oh, really? Star codes. We're doing star codes? I think we're going to do the star codes. Shadow deck is a little tempted. Isis is... Oh, Isis. 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 Oy. Hold on. Isis. We'll definitely say yes to Isis. Hmm. Okay. And Dreams of Gaia. All right, we're going to do Isis first. <clears throat> All the decks that I use are linked below, by the way. There's going to be a lot, okay. There's going to be a lot of sacral energy being thrown around. <laughs> it's weird how they just showed that to me, like little fireballs left and right, left and right. Try to be very mindful of your sexual energy. <clears throat> yeah, I want to say be very mindful of your sexual energy. There's something about like, um, so I think a lot of people are already aware of this, right? Like you can cultivate your own sexual energy for your mana, right? For your own energy work purposes, your spiritual practices. Like, yes, you can do that. That is definitely a thing and it definitely works. There's a lot of validity to that. Um, I can I can see and I can see, they're literally showing it to me and I can feel it. There is there are some people that are kind of irresponsibly throwing their sexual energy all over the place and they're not aware of it. Um, I just want to say be mindful. They're bringing it up and I just I think literally to just have you be aware of yourself in in relation to that. I feel like that's also getting into like weird sexual magic practices that are distorted i'm not saying sex magic is weird i think there is sex magic um but there's also distorted use of that um so just something to be mindful of any messages or insights for the collective Ooh. for this week Sorry, when I channel when I channel my face and my nose gets really itchy. <clears throat> mm. Contacts. Any messages or insights for the collective for this week? Yeah, they're literally showing me fireballs. It's just kind of funny. You just gotta laugh. You gotta laugh. You gotta laugh at that. Strong Leo energy coming in there too. Ooh, oh, there it is. There it is. Proper burial for freedom. Detaching and breaking the programs for freedom. There it is. Sacrifice to Osiris, Lord of the Dead. Ooh. Clearing, clearing, liberating breaking I, like, it really feels like a breaking and it's just like t detaching from those programs past life present power the many spiritual faces of you this is like speaks of past life energy soul retrieval energy i think there's a soul retrieval card in this deck too um yeah it's like literally throwing out the distortions like detaching from the distortions and recollecting the parts that are really truly you especially when it comes to the parts that have been victimized right um, the parts of ourselves that have been victimized, reclaiming them, reclaiming them, and then throwing out the narrative, throwing out the story, throwing out the distortion that came along with that victimization to reclaim us, reclaim our power. I'm actually really happy Osiris came out here because this is the Isis deck, but there, there are quite a few cards that have Osiris in there, and I just kept feeling the masculine so much. Any other messages or insights for the collective for this week? Ooh. The Lunar Queen, and there she is, Osiris and Isis. She of the Celestial Crescent. This speaks of cycles, literally speaks of cycles. You can look at it as the cycles of feminine, cycles of existence, of consciousness, of karma. Excuse me, but it does speak of cycles, okay? 
and the brother in the darkness. Overcoming negative energy with feminine power. Liberating that, that palace cancer energy, right? Liberating the parts of us that have been victimized that need to be reclaimed. Liberating them from distortion, from the darkness, right? And remember, when that square Mars energy comes in and people start throwing their fireballs at you, <laughs> their egos start to get all crazy, you should already have the tools. You should have the tools. You should have already been in the process of doing this reclaiming to have that higher wisdom to deal with it, with detachment. Also with that feminine energy, but with, with detachment, so it can't affect you. So you don't have to, you won't feed it. You won't feed it. By the way, I'm sorry, I just, I have to say I love this. Look at this. Osiris, Isis, in the middle, you literally have the time a timeline card of integration reclaiming through time and space this is exactly what I was talking about in the other reading. Again, if you didn't if you didn't see the other video I posted or did, did posted whatever, I really encourage you to watch it. It has the green background if you are curious about how it sticks out. And then on side of the, all of this, you have the distortion card, the card of darkness. Any other messages or insights for the collective this week? Oh, that's it. On the bottom, truth is unveiled. And look, got set. This is set, by the way, set on both of these. And set is the god of war in the Egyptian pantheon. What did I say? Themes of war and breaking away from the programming. The revelation of Isis. This is um this is a really interesting card, actually, because it's under it's getting clarity and understanding from learning hard lessons. From learning hard lessons via via distorted circumstances or darkness or suffering, victimization. Actually, no, I'm recalling this, right? Because this actually speaks of the story of how Set was able to not just kill Osiris and then Isis resurrected him and then like killed him again, right? Um, Isis learned her lesson. <laughs> is what this base is like literally what this what this card speaks of um isis learned her lesson and how she needed to deal with that and maybe what she should maybe what she should have done or could have done better and like listening to her own intuition about him initially like how much she could have bypassed by doing that but it's reflecting on how she was a victim reflecting on how set the god of war victimized her and all the chaos that ensued because of this virus of victimization which was the last weekly message right but she is going to gain the clarity and understanding and here she is with Osiris right by right by her side, which is also her ma own masculine energy. So again, these balanced forces of, of within and without, right? Um, and reclaiming that by clearing clearing that distortion, breaking away from the programming, the programming of war, the programming of victimization, all of that, and reclaiming herself, being liberated in the process. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> okay, what's under this? Healing the Divine Masculine. Healing the Divine Masculine. Osiris rises. Bringing masculine feminine back into balance within and without. But this card also speaks of what is your own relationship with your own masculine energy, along with masculine energies outside of yourself, or just like the a concept of masculine or concept of men, male. What is your relationship like with that? What is your relationship like with, with gender uh, with your own feminine energy and masculine energy. This really focuses on the masculine, but I, I love that this is here. I love that this is here. It's liberating the feminine, reclaiming the feminine, but also at the same time, it's it's reclaiming the masculine too. It's reclaiming that too. They're bringing up the men's rights thing again. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Can you tell I don't want to talk about it? Um, so a lot how in this community, right? And not just in this community, but even as a collective, um, when we had this emergence of the feminine voice speaking on their own stuff, speaking on their own victimization, it's like, this has been a, con a common theme, right? Um, how the feminine hasn't been heard, how we've been abused, how we've been neglected, and pointing the finger at the masculine, right? 
men are just doing that now too. The masculine is now doing that towards the feminine and speaking up and out about that. Now, just like when the feminine was doing that, was there also this getting lost in the victimization energy of it? Yes, there was. There was the getting so lost in the pain and the hate and also the ego trigger behind that, that we just decided to condemn men, right? Not everybody, obviously, but we shouldn't speak in absolutes. And I realize I just need to check myself because I just did that. Um, but that is also happening with all these like men's rights stuff that's going on too where there is a condemn all women that is that is happening and that is a distortion right but that distortion is going to get cleared out just like how it's been getting cleared out on the reverse end of it right um that everybody's been victimized and that's kind of that's kind of the point too about also bringing up this men's rights stuff and bringing all this up too we've all been victimized because we've all victimized each other regardless of sex and gender and all of that now obviously has this happened to the masculine to the feminine yes of course obviously um but it's time to just be done it's time to break away from that it's time to reclaim ourselves and get out of that that story that really causes us to just repress ourselves and imprison ourselves and allow and gives us permission to imprison others right it's all an imprisonment that's all it is it just it just enables imprisoning each other um that's all i'm going to speak on when it comes to that I, there's more to talk about i might do a video i might not um i know it's a very touchy subject so anyway let's move on let's move on am i gonna do Okay, we're going to wait for star codes. We're going to go right into Dreams of Gaia. Any messages or insights? Any messages or insights? Regarding the spread. Sorry, we only have one card out and I can't see it yet. Um I just I just got sucked into this. Remember what I was saying? It's like the level of discernment to understand, like, uh, you know, who's really authentic and serious and you can, you can invest in them and then who's not, right? Who is still kind of like acting out of their ego and lashing out and all these things and getting caught up in that program and having a really hard time detaching from that program, detaching from that kind of suffering. So like, you're going to be able to discern a lot easier, but I'm also getting too, it's like, you're also going to see where you were getting confused about that. It's almost like I see true one, true one, mm, question mark, right? True, true, question. True, true, maybe not. Um, so some of you guys might have a couple surprises when this discernment really kicks in and it's like we, even more of the veil gets pulled away and you're just like, oh shit, that's who you are. Beautiful, nine of water. You can see her third eye is all lit up and she's in this like crystalline ray of light. Um, this is a card that in this deck really speaks of getting connected to source, getting connected to the, the higher realms, this higher divine truth. It is also the Nine of Cups, which is having um, fulfillment, right? Having emotional fulfillment. But this card also speaks of that level of enlightenment as well. And I actually really wanted to thank you, Transcendence. And I really wanted to put it here with the Osiris card, a proper, proper burial for freedom, uplifting the self, letting the self transcend, right? By reclaiming the self and allowing the clearing to happen. Any other messages or insights? Let's see. Mm. 
yeah, King of Pentacles in reverse, King of Earth in reverse, really wanted to put that here. Again, part of the reclaiming and the clearing that's happening, right? Part of this like soul retrieval energy that's happening. King of Pentacles in reverse is being really focused on things that are not exactly aligned for the higher good or sustainability. King of Pentacles in reverse can be selfish, very self-focused, very controlling, can very be much caught up in greed and power dynamics and really focused on um like yeah materialism and, and things of that nature but the control factor is really coming in here king of pentacles in reverse can sometimes be described as a brute <laughs> and a little bit of a, of a tyrant in their own way but it really comes down to what they can possess what they can take control over shadowy taurus energy clearing clearing that away from the self and also just from stories and victimization of victimization right like clearing away any like emotions wounds or anything that are attached to experiences with people like this but it's also about clearing this within the self too like this shadow aspect of the self because it's tied into that program not caring so much about the bottom line that's also what i just heard that feels again very much like capitalism financial moving away from possession Ugh, what a word right moving away from possession can I get a card for the Lunar Queen, please? Can I get a card for speaking of cycles? King of Air. Interesting. With the Eagle, the higher mind, the discerning eye. <laughs> I love it. I kind of wish there was an eye of Ra, an eye of Horus, just like right here. Because like, that's actually what's coming through. Uh, it's funny. I do have that. I do have that on my bracelet, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm getting like eye of Ra, eye of Horus. I love it. Freaking love it, man. Uh, but King of Air, this is having that discerning eye. It's having wisdom. It's having the the maturity um, to see things for what they are. See things for what they are and make any action or plan accordingly. And also, thank you, communication. Communication, communication, communication. Sitting in that divine wisdom, especially within the feminine, right? Overcoming negative energy with feminine power. And having that level of detachment, King of King of Air is very detached. They just sit in truth. That's all they care about. They just care about truth and strategy of 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 working with truth, right? And that's what's happening here with feminine energy. Um, what does that have to do with cycles? Hold on. Who's coming? Who's going? <laughs> who's coming? Who's going? Sorry, I forget how intricate these cards are. I just was getting lost a little bit in the sigils that are in here. Mm. Mother Maiden Crown is also in this card too. It was very interesting. Anyway, yeah. Who's coming? Who's going? When to speak? When not to speak? What to share? How to share it? It's just, it's discernment. That's all it is. It's discernment and divine wisdom but about the changes that are happening. That's why this card is, that's why the card of cycles came out. Cause there's a lot of Isis cards in this deck, but the lunar queen came out. Knowing the wave of ebb and flow, how to ride them and understanding like why waves are happening, understanding why certain people are doing what they're doing. It's all about discernment. That's all it's about. But communication's huge there. Can I get a card for Brother in the Darkness? Oh, I got two cards. Let's see. Yeah. First card is not fun. Wow. Three kings. Can't even make this shit up. Six of Fire in Reverse and the King of Water in Reverse. Yeah. Mm. This is not being attached to your emotions, like emotional shutdown or, det or detachment in a way that's like detrimental to yourself or other people, like emotionally manipulative. To be honest, it's like, I was actually talking to somebody about this earlier, which I think is not co not coincidental, not being connected to your own freaking humanity. People who are living out distortion, who are suffering, who are not living in their soul, not living through divinity, like not practicing that awareness. They're not connected to their humanity. They don't know how to be yet or they resist it. That six of fire in reverse, this is all, this is it speaks completely about power dynamics and control. This is one in control and not being connected to your own humanity at the same time. Not which means not being connected to the soul, compassion, love, empathy, all those things. And that is part of 
the program that's being stripped away. So people who are holding on tight to this program, they're probably going to be living out this program until they get it. Three kings. And the only one upright is the king of air, which is coming through on the side of the feminine. Wow. Let's see if anything else wants to come out. On the bottom interesting the mother in reverse what did i say a lot of feminine masculine stuff going on right now uh mother in reverse this is like basically having the empress in reverse this is like part of the liberation this is part of reclaiming the self that needs to be reclaimed it's that palace athena cancer energy literally cancer is the mother palace athena is how we resolve conflict how we find balance it's very libra in nature it's also about justice i mean that's i feel like that's basically what we're looking at with the mother in reverse it's speaking to that palace athena cancer energy and how it's squaring everything and it's bringing up all these themes of how the mother energy hasn't been honored how it's actually been victimized neglected, abused, et cetera, et cetera, disempowered even. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Underneath that, seven of water to the queen of water to the father. Now we have the emperor here, ma more masculine, feminine. <clears throat> that seven of water and that queen of water is an interesting combination. Queen of water is cancer. It's also that psychic, intuitive, compassionate, healer light worker sort of energy the exact energy that i've been talking about is like that's been highly affected or needs to kind of come back into the fold liberated it's also healing 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 surrounding the masculine the father energy the seven of water speaks of flow it actually speaks of surrender to forces and being in tune with them like even if you look at the visual you see how she's just like <laughs> and it's funny because i said seven of cups shouldn't come out But this Seven of Cups is very different. The Seven of Cups doesn't speak of illusion. It speaks of flowing with what is, right? And really getting into the emotions here. Perception, perception. Hmm, perception. When, when getting into reflecting on victimization, right? So that we can clear it. There is also a need to, to again, higher mind, widen the perspective here of the victimizers that are attached to the victimization you see within yourself and without, right? And as this like level of discernment also starts to kick in this week, this deeper level of discernment, that's actually gonna really help to clear and heal as well. But that's what I'm getting with this to widen the perception and also take accountability again for where you could have victimized people um, as well in turn. It's like when we've, sometimes when we've been victimized, we can become the victimizer, right? There's also people going through this process outside of yourself as well and maybe seeing you in more of a tr truer light of how they victimize you or your own victimization. And then there's a forgiveness. There's really like a, a, like a giving allowance and compassion for people's victimization. It doesn't mean that it's giving license to allow them to victimize you. It's not giving allowance for that, right? It's just, oh, I see and I understand. But this is really more so about you first and foremost, okay? Mm. Wow. It's a lot. Am I still going to do the star codes? We're like an hour in. I haven't gotten to the elements. Okay, really quickly, we're going to do some star codes cards, and then I'll get into the elements. I'm getting real hot in here. <clears throat> Are we going to get another chakra card? <clears throat> oh, any other messages or insights for the collective this week?
Sagittarius, expand. Definitely think this is tying into the, the message from yesterday. Because <laughs> I actually started the reading yesterday trying to tune into Sag. And then I was like, I think this was bigger than Sag. But here we have Sag. Expand. This is also Jupiter energy. This is growth. This is development. That's what Jupiter does. It brings spiritual growth. There's also a lot of movement that I'm feeling here with the Sagittarius um, card. A lot of freaking movement. There's such a strong desire. Um, <clears throat> hold on a second. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh good lord i know sorry guys sagittarius is also very vocal oh she's even touching her throat chakra in this card um there could also be a lot oh my god bleh. there could also be a lot of that too happening as well where it is time to speak up and out in the ways that you need to but this 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 i love this because i feel such a strong like there's spiritual communion happening here, but there's movement. There's like, I'm ready. I'm here. I'm free. Sagittarius is free. Sagittarius is freedom. This card is freedom and liberation by really getting rid and clearing the things that do not belong to you, the things that are not a part of you, the things that are not a part of us anymore. This whole programming of war and taking and power struggles and mind, 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 right? And then to move into this place of transcendence into this place of the Nine of Cups, the emotional fulfillment within the self, feeling at home even within the self and comfortable enough within the self to speak on what it is you want and to go for what it is that your soul is saying, go and do and be free. Oh, I love it. <clears throat> <clears throat> that frog's gonna go away in a second i swear can i get a card for the king of earth in reverse such a i'm sorry such a beautiful sag card look at all that hair i want that i want hair like that i want like I love my hair don't get me wrong i do love my hair <clears throat> but damn imagine imagine you had hair you had locks like that you know all kinds of things with that anyway can i get a card for the king of earth in reverse please for the collective Doesn't that just say it all? Conflict, war, opposition. It's opposition, so it's an aspect, aspectal card, excuse me. Confrontation, 53 breaking down to an eight. Look at that, head to head. <laughs> and this is part of what we're clearing. <clears throat> the program of war, the program of mine, the program of I'm taking this from you, us versus them, right? All of that control possession greed that's what we're that's what we're trying to clear right now and break away from now like i said for anybody who's gonna attach to that and who's gonna have a really hard and who's like struggling to break away from that and letting that go i feel like they're gonna just like relive it in some weird crazy way like if they can't clear it it's like it almost has to come like all crashing in on them and i'm not trying to make that a reality it's just and that's the thing we do co-create our reality it's just how it feels it's just how it feels because like it has to be let go it has to be released in some way shape or form whether your body does it for you or crazy circumstances around you force you to right anyway i just yeah moving on can i get <laughs> and look what we got for the king of air and the lunar queen communication <laughs> the third house uh gemini energy 41 breaking down to a five so again i really think it's also speaking to the balancing of energies right because mars is in gemini mars is in third house energy I'm giving have masculine card with the feminine right um so i just think that that's kind of fascinating but not surprising i mean i think it's just reiterating everything that i was already talking about that communication is like is such a huge thing here of understanding how to practice that higher wisdom and communicate effectively when dealing with people who are still in that program right we're still in that program i'm getting strong magician energy there like the pluto mercurial sun energy getting strong magician energy there as well interesting all right moving on
Can I get a card for Brother in the Darkness? And the King of Water in reverse. There we go. Wow, and then this came out reverse. Virgo in reverse. Am I keeping it in reverse? Yeah, I guess I will. Energy of six. Um, God, it just, it, it literally feels like famine. It literally feels like the opposite of, of nurturing and growing something. So that's also what Virgo is. Virgo is how do we maintain, right? How do we continue practices, continue cultivating so we continue, 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 continue. How does the machine keep working so we can keep things moving, how we can harvest and all these things. And it just feels like complete disruption of that, complete disruption of sustainability, complete disruption of flow is attaching to this program of war and taking and control, distortion, lack of humanity, Yeah. All right. Um, let's go ahead and get into the elements. I think this is pretty clear what's going on collectively. All right. Who's going first? Whew. It's hot. Water, air, earth, or fire? Fire. Fire. You guys are going first. Okay. <clears throat> fire signs. Aries, Leo, Sag, starting with the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck, because it's the best. Fire signs, fire signs, Aries, Leo, so oh, win, 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 win. Mmm, mmm, mmm. <laughs> okay. Nothing wrong with being driven. Nothing wrong with having goals that you want to accomplish. Again, just be mindful of like this program that we're clearing right now, the program of war. The program of men. The program of me versus them. Because <laughs> they literally showed me a trophy and I heard win. It's <laughs> like literally, literally what they showed me. But let's see. This could be someone around you. It doesn't have to be you. It could just be what's coming up in your reality, right? So let's just see. Let's, let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. Aries Leo Sag. They're showing me the Nike symbol. Is that more of a sign for Nike, the goddess? Or is that just like a testament to like win? What's the tagline for Nike? I forget the tagline for Nike. Interesting. So Tarantula first card out, and it is your element of fire. Tarantula comes out when we have tension. There's tension, there's discomfort, there's being pulled in different directions. It can speak of a crossroads. Do I do this? Do I do that? And there's usually a little bit of fear that goes along with tarantula as well. It's kind of a stressful energy. Yeah, I got to be honest. I feel like that program of win, achieve, mine is like can, can be coming up here and maybe distorting your thinking a little bit or making it hard for you to make certain choices or to make certain moves and that might become very obvious to you it could also be that someone's asking you maybe um or even like poking at you to be more competitive it just feels like there's a competitive energy within your field or within yourself and it's causing this like it's it's causing disruption it's causing difficulty and a little bit of a struggle with like with actually being free and moving into flow. It's disrupting your flow. It's disrupting your flow, Joe. Ooh. Fear. Look, I mean, look, you can even see how these cards are just related, even just looking like the illustrations, right? Rabbit comes out when we're talking about fear, hypervigilance being a little like, e, like a little bit in that kind of a state. Rabbit also just traditionally speaks of abundance and fertility, but it doesn't speak of that in this deck, okay? I love the artists of these cards. Seriously, I like, I just freaking adore it. Um, what are you afraid of? Whatever this competitive energy is, it's making your ego want to win. It's like, which means that if your ego is wanting to win, 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 it means it's afraid of losing control or it's afraid of loss. That's, that's what's coming up here with the rabbit. Just straight up. You're wanting to win because you're afraid of losing control or you're literally afraid of losing. 
and it, it's causing disruption to your flow in the present to to make progress towards something or even just have like peace and feel fulfilled. I really feel like it's really disrupting flow and freedom for you though. Any other messages or insights from my fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag, Aries, Leo, Sag. What's yours is not going to pass you by. Some of you guys is actually is translating to FOMO a little bit. Like almost if you don't do something a certain way, like in this traditional competitive way or in this way of like needing maybe to forcibly go for something in the way that you're you're very programmed or attached to getting it, like you think you're just going to lose it forever. But what's meant for you will not pass you by. I feel like spirits ask you to come, to have a little bit more faith, to have more faith in that. You may even be worried that someone else is going to get something that you want. Again, what's yours is meant for you. Oh, is she gooey? <laughs> the lamb with the otter. I'm sorry, it's just like very cute. Uh, lamb is like a baby. It is it's like literally like a baby. It's like a newborn energy. It's pure. It's like, it's wet behind the ears. It's kind of green. It's like just getting its sea legs. And then otter is just unconditional love and openness, receptivity, two of cups, six of cups, lovers, that sort of deal. Um, that's what's driving the rabbit energy, which is kind of interesting. I didn't expect that. Why would that be driving the rabbit energy? Because whatever it is that you want is something very near and dear to your heart. It speaks to your inner child. It speaks to your inner child. It speaks to your heart. It speaks to your soul and you want it. it could even be a relationship. I only say that because the otter is a relationship card. Um, like I want it. <laughs> Again, what's meant for you is not going to pass you by. Your intentions are really good here, fire signs. Your intentions are in the right place, but I feel like the ego is tricking you. The ego is tricking you or your external circumstances are tricking you. So whatever is that you are so just like meant for my heart, meant for my soul, whatever this is, just trust that. Just trust that. Just trust that. Okay. Because I can feel like the ego is saying like, you're not going to get it. Da -da 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 -da. Ego is coming in to like freak you out. And for some of you, it could be that you know, you want something or someone and then you're, you, you're like, you're looking around and you're thinking someone else is going to go after it and take it from you. Have more faith. Have more faith. Have more faith. Have more faith. Oh, yeah. Shark on the bottom. A looming threat. It's interesting, too, what's behind the fight energy. Because it's like, What's really behind the fight energy, fire signs, is vulnerability. That's really what's behind it. On the bottom, we have B. This is rewards for heart for, um, for strong effort. Ooh, ooh. And then we get some feisty energy. Yeah, there's competitive energy going. I, I, yeah, I can't get away from the competitive energy. So think of this like the prize, okay? Think of the bee as the prize, the gift, the reward at the end of the tunnel, right? And again, whatever the bee is to you, it just, it speaks to your heart. It speaks to your soul. It's like, it's there's a very pure, excuse me, desire and wanting and connection with whatever the bee is. But that's why the rabbit is here. Because if we really, really desire something or we really care about something, Sometimes that can trigger our fear. Again, the ego of like, oh my God, I'm not going to get it. How can I get it? <laughs> How can I pounce on it and never let it go, right? The program of take, the program of possession. We don't possess anything. But that's why the that's why the rabbit is here. And then also creating the tarantula energy of like throwing off your flow, throwing you off, putting you in a place of like, what do I do? What do I do? Because you want the bee. Now, out underneath that, we have panther, buffalo, fire ant, and then we get the fish, and then look at this. 
elk, octopus, and deer, masculine, feminine principle with devil right in the middle, basically. And these energies are not exactly kosher either. The fire ant is anger. It's anger and discomfort and building of tension. Panther is like a release or a purging or a yelling or a cathartic energy. Buffalo is about getting through things, but buffalo also speaks of towers. Fish is like here to say, try to flow with this shit. <laughs> fish is here for but that's what i'm saying there is a competitive energy here and clearly with the octopus there is some sort of distortion that's like that's making things really difficult now this can definitely be happening between you and other people like i said it's like you want the bee the bee is what you want the bee is what you seek and you could be really worried that people are going to try to take it from you or someone's going to try to take it from you um, it could even be something you want for yourself and maybe you have a friend or a family member or a coworker or a partner and however they come at you just like just makes always makes it feel like you're gonna lose that you see what i'm saying there's a definitely a five of ones energy here that's fueling the fire but you wanting the bee is a very pure want it's a very pure desire and you can totally have that some of you this competitive energy you're literally fighting yourself it's your ego getting all riled up, fighting with you, making you think you got to go into control mode. You don't. You don't. Okay. I really want to take this off. Um, cards. <laughs> Sorry, brain fart. I am going to take this off. Hold on a second. Okay. And then we'll put the camera back down. I just wasn't sure how much you guys were going to be able to see it. So, okay. Oh, that's totally fine. Okay. Yeah. Whew. Springtime is a coming. All right. For my fire signs. We'll do this right over here. Any other messages or insights on fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag. Aries, Leo, Sag. That's interesting. Ace of Wands in reverse and the Hierophant. The hair, I, it's weird. The Hierophant almost feels like it's acting like a muzzle. That's weird. And it's it's bringing out the rabbit. The Hierophant is bringing out the Five of Wands. The Hierophant is bringing up this competitive fighting energy. The Hierophant is making you unsure. It's almost like I don't want to follow the rules. That's like literally how this is coming across. I don't want to go by the book. I don't want to follow the rules. I want to rebel. Competitive. Have faith. Please have faith. <laughs> I'm like, what are you going to do, fire signs? <laughs> What's that? What the hell? Sorry. That was like four or five times. 101 on my crazy clock. Just put this up there to disturb. Give me a second. Okay. All right. But that's how this feels. And it's totally attached to the rabbit. I don't want, 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 I don't want to play by the rules. I don't, I don't want to. I'm struggling to have faith. I'm struggling to like, yeah, it's like, it's, it's an energy of I'm about to rebel. I'm about to go fight. Or I'm about to like go into control mode to like to get the B because it's like it's something you want so bad, but it's like you're you're the lot the lack of faith here and the getting riled up is like, how do I want to say it? It's just it's because you're really afraid you're not gonna get it. It's fear. It's fear. Some of you are actually, this is interesting. So for some of you where maybe the B might correlate with your idea of an independent life or I can only get the B if I 
am single or whatever. It's like, it could even be that you're like, I don't want a commitment because then I can't have the B, right? So for some of you, that's translating that way. But yeah, I feel like this is more like, I don't want to follow the rules here. If like, almost like if I follow the rules, I'm going to lose. Like that's, that's like how you feel. Page of Cups on the Lamb, beautiful. I mean, we already knew this is a very pure intent that you have here. It's a very pure desire that you have, and it's definitely coming from your inner child as well. It's very, it's like, it's like, it's so touching. I'm like, I'm loving it. It's very touching. Some of you are really worried about authority with trying to get this B. Why would you be worried about authority? Or you might have to fight with authority. Or that authority like will keep you held back or restricted. I, I really keep wanting to reassure you to have faith. Any other messages or insights for my fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag. Death. Things are, yeah, okay. Interesting. So death just landed on Ace of Wands in reverse and the Hierophant here. I like this actually. This is showing this is showing a promise. Um with death coming out, it's telling me that you're gonna be able to, to shift your perspective of this, that like you're not gonna go into full rebel mode. You're not gonna break the rules, maybe even break your own ethics, like as a result of trying so desperately to get the B. It's like I almost feel like death card is coming out to, as like a sit down. As like a I need to sit and reflect on this. It's transformation. It's transformation of your feelings here about Ace of Wands and Reverse and the Hierophant, and it's going to change your perspective. It's going to change your perspective on, on getting the B. Maybe even will restore your faith. Almost as a little bit like a sit down from spirit. Any other messages or insights? My fire signs Aries, Leo, Sag. Ooh, nice overall. Hmm. Strength and then the chariot in reverse. This is actually coming around the lamb and the page of cups energy. This very like pure intent that you have here. The strength card really strangling the ego. <laughs> really going, ego, stop it. <laughs> right? Listening to the inner child, not listening to this voice of failure. That's what the chariot in reverse is. Chariot in reverse is like, I'm, I'm going to fail. I'm not going to be triumphant. I can't move. I can't have. I can't, I can't, I can't. Being in the empress energy, this is the empress, right? Being in, I don't want to mess all the cards up, but being in that energy with the king of swords, practicing that divine higher wisdom and being like, quiet. <laughs> Ego, quiet. And then shifting your perspective here with the death card. Overall, we have the star. Oh, with the nine of cups. You couldn't get two better cards for your overall. As above, so below. Getting exactly what it is you want. Getting the B. Getting the B. Underneath that, we do have the knight of wands. That Sagittarius energy. Remember, the Sag card did come out in the astro, astro codes, astro cards. Um, and being able to go for that in the right timing. Okay in the right timing that's what they're just telling me in the right timing not only will a different perspective be required here with the death card over the hierophant um but a different approach you can still play it by the book you can still play it by the book you can still play it by a code of ethics if you will you're not going to have to totally rebel or what have you um, you just need a different approach. You just need a different approach. And you will get the B. Let the death card show you that. Stay in touch with your inner child and keep that ego in check. The ego keeps telling you you're not going to make it happen. Don't listen to it. It's lying to you. <laughs> it's lying, okay? All right, fire signs. Moving on.
<laughs> Get my cards all organized again. In my progress chart, I'm Leo rising right now. Um, it's going to be a while until I move into Virgo, but it's going to be interesting when that happens. Okay, who's next? Earth, air, or water? Sorry, I'm hearing a song. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? Earth, okay, earth, air, or water? Air. I feel like air wants to go next. I don't know what song this is. I don't even know what language this is. Uh, oh, it's Spanish. <laughs> I should know that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's, like, it's just repeating in my head. Okay. Air. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Oh, interesting. Owl wanted to pop out. Not taking it. It just went a little, hello, did a little peek. Air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Music keeps coming up so much. Sorry, guys. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Aquarius, it's weird. So it's like when I tap into elements, I can usually feel like an overarching, like what's going on. And then I can tap in like individual signs. Gemini and Libra, you guys feel like you're, you're in very similar places. Aqua, you feel very far away, like energetically, like some, like you guys are kind of going through different stuff is kind of what it feels like, which is interesting. Aqua, I don't know if you're feeling left out or feeling like you need space. It kind of feels like that. You might just be off in the stars with your Aquaness. Um, there's such a fun, I keep, I keep hearing music. Uh, there's a fun energy here, air signs. Yeah, Aquas, I think your mind and your business, actually all of you might be, but Aquas, I feel like you're creating a lot of space compared to Gemini and Libra. Um, yeah, this is how it's coming across. I think minding, minding everyone, like, I, I think, bleh, words. <laughs> I think everybody minding your own business is not a bad thing for this week. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Yeah, there's such like a fun party vibe or dancing vibe, just feeling good vibe. Interesting, Scorpion almost wanted to come out. Are you dancing? Are you like, are you like getting over something by dancing, by having a good time, just blowing off steam? Is that how you guys are dealing? <laughs> Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Yeah, I feel like you're blowing off steam. Interesting. Hummingbird and black egg. This is cultivating ideas, brewing ideas, cooking ideas. That's what this feels like. Could even be downloads. Um, black egg speaks of the throat chakra, but I'm getting so much like mind, like very much like mercurial energy. I don't think it's time to share any of this yet. Like that's why it feels like it's like brewing, cultivating ideas, brewing, brewing, cultivating, brewing, brewing, cultivating. Some of you guys could be just listening to like, I keep getting music. I can't get away from music. Uh, sound might be very, very important for you guys too during this time. Might be very activating for you around this time. But yeah, I don't think you're sharing anything yet. It's like creativity is just brewing within you. 111 on my crazy clock. Any other messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Why is the pain? Oh, whoa. Panther's coming out for everybody lately. We have Panther with the tiger. Wow. Remember what I was saying about blowing off steam? There is a component of blowing off steam for you guys this week. But Panther and Tiger, they're both speak of divine feminine power. Both of them. This is feels like, I'm going to show you my teeth. <laughs> this is like, I'm going to show you what I am capable of. I'm going to show you my power in full force. But I keep getting that a lot of you are doing this just by f having fun, having fun, dancing, listening to music. Um, it's su such a different, such a different energy. It's almost like you guys go from brewing ideas and creativity maybe being a little bit like in hermit mode, but not like a silent hermit mode. It's like, no, 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 I'm in silent. Like, 
not like an inactive hermit mode, like very, very active. It feels like you're doing a lot, writing a lot, creating a lot, making notes, planning, like blah, 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 all of that. Some of you guys could also be just brewing too much on, on some things that have happened because I keep getting that some of you like have gone through something or, or will be going through something in the week and it's like almost feels like a conflict and then you just got to like blow off steam. Whether you got to like say a lot of shit to somebody that's been on your mind and then you just like blow it off by having fun. Like some of you guys I really feel like are in that boat. But for the most part, most of you, this feels like a creative brewing in your own juices. Um, and then... Wabba! Ah, sharing those ideas but there, there's something about this that feels like cathartic or blowing off steam or I will show you my power I will show you who I really am I will show you how I really handle things um some of you have been underestimated misjudged you might shock somebody tiger is speaks of spiritual awakenings but tiger also speaks of like it's very queen of wands it's like a mystic energy um but it's passion it's ferocity panther is also ferocity but panther is you can tell even by the face it's very much like a don't fuck with me like card it's powerhouse energy that's what it is it's powerhouse energy does someone bother you while you're in your creative juices? Is that what happens there sometimes? Yeah, it's like you go from like isolated creative juices mode to showing people who you are, maybe even needing to set boundaries. And then I feel like you go and have a, like a margarita after. Like that's my, like that's how it's coming across. Yeah, tarot readings and oh, crocodile. This is literally the venting card and the coming down from like a conflict or a stressful event. Yeah, I really feel that strongly for you guys. It, thank you. For some of you, someone is coming at you as the panther and you're meeting them as the tiger. So much more calm. It's it's less aggressive because you don't need to be. Like more, more emotionally mature. If it does happen that way for you guys. Hold on. <laughs> hummingbird lots of talking air signs okay i can't get over this feeling of conflict i can't get over this feeling of like wow <laughs> can't get over it cannot get over it. it it wanted to be with the with the with the cats it wanted to be with the cats you might have a strong association with cats or lyrans or any of like you know the feline galactic beings um cats are guardians but they also speak of leadership too and again i keep feeling like for some of you where there has been a conflict it's like someone comes at you wrong or someone pokes you when you're you're busy creating or cultivating and you just you meet them as a goddess you meet them as this like white tiger regal energy and there's a hell of a lot of truth coming out and you're really showing somebody who you really are some of you might have to be both the panther and tiger to get your point across, but I really feel like this is about getting away from that program of fight, getting away from that program of war, right? Coming at it from a different, like, understanding of conflict, understanding of disagreement and fight, right? By treating it differently, treating them differently than how they're treating you. Whether they understand that or not, right? But you're definitely not letting any truth go unspoken. That's for sure. Hmm. Any other messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Some of you used to be the panther and you're becoming the tiger. Again, just that level of development and growth. Mmm, that's interesting. Rabbit and dragonfly. Dragonfly is kind of third eye energy. It speaks of perception, changing perspe changing perceptions as well. And then here's that rabbit again, right? I feel like rabbit's kind of representing the ego for today in, the, in these readings. Um, for those of you guys who just went to the timestamp, fire sign also had rabbit. So if you have any fire sign associations, connections, or resonance, then I would, I would go check out the fire sign reading as well. Um, 
but yeah the rabbit it's like it is fear it is like a triggery energy right so if you have panthers coming at you and you come out with the white tiger it's because you you you're able to change your perception and your perspective on why someone's lashing out the way that they are right and you're able to facilitate communication from this more of a divine place this higher place spiritually evolved place instead of ego driven place right now some of you it's about seeing this within yourself recognizing and taking accountability for the panther version of you that's been driven by the rabbit and you're seeing that and you're allowing that shift in perspective to be like i can communicate differently i can show who i am and i can sit in my power uh, from a more mature place oops okay anyway sorry distracted <laughs> on the bottom we do have butterfly this is kind of a, this is a renewed energy renewed energy lighter energy I feel like just being able to practice this, just to like practice this tool of being the white tiger and like because you're able to shift your perspective, right, is the change for you, is the transformation for you. Yeah. 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 All right, let's go ahead and move into tarot cards. Just deciding which one I want to go with. Actually, the Santa Marta deck is calling me. Any messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Messages or insights for my air signs. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Five of Wands in reverse. And here it landed on the rabbit with the dragonfly. Like I said, seeing conflict differently, seeing how you can communicate and still sit in your power in a different way, no matter how someone's coming at you, right? Or no matter how you used to come out at people, right? It's understanding that you don't have to add fuel to the fire. You don't have to turn a fight or a disagreement into a, a war. Um, or even if someone's trying to create war, you don't have to play, <laughs> right? You can diffuse the situation and still sit in your power without giving your power away. Six. Yes. <laughs> I love these cards, but the sixes and nines are like always hard to tell because they're on the side. But anyway, six of swords in reverse. Mm. Especially if any of you guys are deal especially if any of you are dealing with anybody who just won't put down the fight, but you're trying to be in this like white tiger energy. Mm. It's interesting too, because like I said, for some of you it's also some of you guys, it's also both, right? Dealing with panthers, and then it's reflecting on your own inner panther to evolve into the tiger, to put away the panther. Um, but also getting that too, like, when you're in the heat of the moment, is the rabbit making the panther come out? Or are you able to be in the dragonfly to come from the, to be the white tiger? I can, I can totally see it that way. Like the rabbit fuels the panther fear and ego trigger the panther response well dragonfly higher mind and perception and wisdom triggers the white tiger look i mean this is literally third eye energy and look crescent moon on the third eye i mean rabbit panther it's like all like like you know i don't have a word for that <laughs> anyway that's just what i'm getting let's keep going
Definitely recognizing anybody who keeps disturbing your peace and just dropping it as the white tiger. Yeah, sun with clarity, new beginnings. Especially if like for those of you guys where you're, you're understanding how to transform and like not be the panther anymore, but act from the white tiger, it really does facilitate a lot more peace in your life and with relationships. Interesting. King of Pentacles in reverse. Where did we see that before? We saw that in the collective message, right? As far as like what is being released, what are we like moving away from? Moving away from trying to control, trying to possess, trying to take, right? And to also not be so self-focused. Again, seeing this about yourself and other people. Is this the nine? I knew the nine of swords was going to come out. Nine of swords over here with hummingbird and egg. That's interesting. It came over here because I keep feeling like a brewing of creativity, a brewing of ideas, like brewing, brewing, brewing. Now you could be stewing on some things that might have happened between you and a panther, right? That could totally be the case. Or even just reflecting on how you've been the panther to other people and how you want to be the white tiger. And it's causing this like can't sleep, overthinking, that sort of deal. But I, I keep also really feeling this brewing of creativity though. You could be having a lot of late nights, um, late nights or no sleeping or a lot of dreams that are like emphasize, thank you, that are emphasizing the need to create, the need to create, the need to be productive. And they might be getting disrupted by your fears. They might like literally be going from like dreams to like nightmares or dreams and then you wake up with anxiety. Some of you guys, that could even be the case here, but it's interesting that the Knight of Swords wanted to come out over there. Uh, there's a pressure to speak, a pressure to speak, a pressure to speak. That's also happening as well. Any other messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. The Knight of Cups. Interesting. That landed right in the middle of everything. The Knight of Cups always moves forward from the heart. Heart forward. Always moves forward with love. Always moves forward with compassion and empathy and understanding when they, they're in the upright like that. They follow their heart. Ooh. Eight of Cups in reverse, attachment. <sighs> okay, so air signs. It seems like the rabbit energy, the panther energy, anxiety, all of that is, is attached to the Eight of Cups in reverse. All of that is attached to literally attachments. It's also touching the Six of Swords in reverse. That can be codependencies. That can be things that, um, that we want to possess, that we want to have control over. That could even be relationships. That can be people, right? And again, it's also tied to this King of Pentacles in reverse energy. I want, I want, I want. I want to have, I want to have. It's greedy energy. Um, now, again, you could be seeing this as part of your own shadow, but I really feel strongly it's coming out in conflicts, Okay conflicts with other people or maybe even one person in particular and you're reflecting on that and this is all about evolving and moving into the white tiger energy okay now somebody could be coming at you as well as a knight of cups maybe even coming with an apology or just trying to like come forward with emotion but they have the eight of cups in reverse next to them as well so if someone does come to you stay in that white tiger energy your level of discernment if you're coming from that higher mind um, you'll see them for what they are. You'll see that they're truly a Knight of Cups or you'll see that they're a King of Pentacles in reverse. And if you see they're a King of Pentacles in reverse and then you speak your truth on that, and then if they, if the Panther comes out, goes from Knight of Cups to Rabbit to Panther real fast, and you know how to deal with it as a White Tiger, okay? And again, this is also teaching you how to cultivate that tool of coming from the higher mind and when it comes to conflict, right? Be the White Tiger. So anything else that wants to come out here? Mm. Any other messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Three of Cups in reverse and the Queen of Wands in reverse. 
Queen of Wands in a verse is someone who's angry. Especially with the Three of Cups in a verse, this can actually be somebody who's jealous. Literally, that's just, especially with these two cards coming together, it can translate as jealousy. Jealousy, anger, um, and it actually came out underneath the Knight of Cups. It came out underneath that. It's all the same energy. It's all the same person. So keep in mind, air signs, how this can be manifesting for you because it can be reflecting something to you about yourself, about how you can have a tendency for all these things within yourself and your shadow and like how you feed into the program of mine, possession, take, me versus them, war, all of that, right? And how you can evolve that from being that and the rabbit and the panther to to being dragon and dragon being dragonfly and the white tiger okay and if you are confronted by somebody like this and the panther comes out just be the white tiger if someone comes at you like this and you're very tempted to get into your panther practice the higher mind and be the white tiger you understand what i'm saying because i can feel it a lot of you guys this is a conflict to bring this up and out um, to the surface. But yeah, I feel like I'm looking at an energy that is angry, potentially even jealous, um, and they're very upset. They're upset and they're attached to what they want. Overall, four cups in reverse, rejection. Rejection and abandonment issues could be stemmed in all of this. And again, if you are also learning to not get sucked in a, into that panther energy and being the white tiger energy, you may also struggle with any sort of abandonment issues as well. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That was kind of intense air signs. Moving on. <clears throat> hmm. Um, who are we doing next? Water and Earth. Hmm. I know water signs. Let's do some water signs. Okay. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Any messages or insights from my water signs? Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Mm. The frog. We have emotional cleansing happening here. Water signs. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> so letting go. Letting go. Emotional purging. Healing. Some of you guys might have a good cry. Usually when this card comes out, we've been crying. They've been crying and it landed on the King of Pentacles in reverse in the opposition. So again, clear um, part of clearing away the program here. Let's see what we have. Am I taking these? No. All right. Any other messages or insights from my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, water sign. So we have fox and dolphin coming out here. Both of them I would consider Gemini energies. Fox is very like smart, sly, observant. Um, dolphin is very playful, very much like inner child. It's also very sexual energy. And this card actually does speak of the healer. It's almost like you jump from this to getting your groove back or to getting in your new groove. Thank you, new groove. Getting into your new groove here with fox and dolphin. Um, the watchful eye. What is this watchful eye? Some of you guys may have a close, a person close to you. Some of you guys, actually a lot of you guys is a guide. Thank you. Guide, not guy. 
144.41 on the on the camera when I said that guide excuse me that kind of has your back and is looking out for you it almost feels like masculine around a feminine is kind of how it feels it can even be yourself just um staying aware um which is just kind of interesting while, while you play it's like dolphin is such a playtime energy but I get that you're you're protected I get that you're shielded and again somebody might have someone close to you who's like just like you know um close to you for whatever reason or another um but it really is if it has this feeling of while you're doing your thing water signs like spirits looking out for you this guide is looking out for you or this person is looking out for you but it's coming after a period of letting go and releasing and cleansing it's interesting it's like such a jump it's very like 180 like one day you're crying and the next you're like frolicking and creating and doing your thing it's very interesting Sorry, I thought I heard something. Any other messages or insights for my water signs? Cancer, Pisces. Oh, we got the, we almost said dolphin again. We got the unicorn. Unicorn is third eye energy. It's also very Aquarian. It's um, believing that the impossible is possible. It's very much of being uh, connected to the upper realms, if you will, and galactic energies. And I wanted to land right on the fox and dolphin. For those of you guys where this is a physical person, it's 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 a really nice energy it doesn't really matter what your relationship is but there's definitely this like psychic spiritual connection with this individual and it's just nice it's just fun it's just comforting and it just is what it is um i like it i just really really like it you're doing you they're doing them and there is this sort of like cosmic psychic connection between the two of you you two might even have a, a tether or a cord between your third eyes um it's you might even meet each other in like dream time astral time but for those of you guys where this is a guide um they're just right by your side did you hear that too <laughs> anyway um but for those of you guys where there it's a guide they're right by your side and i feel like they're right there helping you um giving you information giving you downloads and also water signs i mean i just want to say your third eye is open <laughs> it is open it is open it is open it is open what's going on around you water signs <laughs> any other messages or insights for my water signs, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. I was like, did the light change? It's like, oh, hmm. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Well, that shifted the energy, man. Black egg, throat chakra energy, huh? Unfinished? It's interesting, right? Because water signs, like I said, it's like you go from this state to suddenly being in your groove, being in your groove, having a lot of support around you, maybe supportive friends, supportive partners, definitely a lot of spiritual support. Your third eye is very open. You're getting a lot of information that way. A lot of discernment is happening that way. Um, a lot of dream time is going on for you. And then we get this black egg card where I don't even feel like it's actually, like you're not aware of it. Like the black egg is throat chakra, throat chakra energy, right? I don't feel like you're engaged in that. I feel like something isn't being said or some sort of unfinished something, unresolved something. And I don't even, I feel like you're just in the dolphin. You're just like, Wee! I can't make a dolphin noise. Um, and here's the black egg just sitting there like the black, like, you know, black egg in the middle of the table, like a pink elephant. I feel like this is someone around you. I don't feel like this is you water signs. Any other messages or insights from my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. <sighs> Damn. This is why you have a lot of support around you. Oh, Jesus. This is, sorry, I'm annoyed for you. This is why you have a lot of support around you. Mm-hmm. And you know what's funny? 
because the fox, dolphin, and unicorn are like this, right? You're the dolphin, eee, doing your thing. Fox and unicorn are looking at the same direction and look what landed right next to the unicorn. Mm -hmm. And what did I say to the black egg? It's like around you, but it's like you're not tuned into it. It's not your energy. So water signs, be very mindful if your third eye is going to be this open. You're just going to see more. Okay, that's all. That's all. Just just be aware. You're, you're going to be seeing more. But that's also why the fox and unicorn are glued to your butt. Okay, because your spirit team is around you. You and you know, you also have supportive friends, potentially like partnership as well. But it's like, I want to say comrades. It's like allies, allies in arms against this, against, against this dolphin black egg energy. For some of you guys, these are even different energies that are, are like thinking about you around you and you're just so busy being the dolphin <laughs> mm. we're gonna get we're gonna dive into that overall starfish magnetic energy like attractive captivating energy and then look <sighs> phoenix rising from the ashes root chakra energy this is rebirth this is being in power especially like going from the frog energy to all of this it's like not only have you been clearing and shedding it's like you've gotten into a new level of power within yourself and you are magnetic you are you are lit up little dolphin you are very lit up and so of course there are energies around that are like <laughs> want to see the dolphin spirit's like nope <laughs> allies are like nope wow all right, let's get into this. Let's just get into the octopus. Let's just do it. Actually, no. Let's just let's just see where the cards land and what wants what what wants to be said and communicated here. Any messages or insights in the water sign? Oh. So it disconnected. I have no idea if it lagged because it looks fine on my end. I don't know what you guys may or may not have missed. And I was about to say, let's look into the octopus. And then I said, no, screw it. We'll just see where the cards landed. And then I looked up and it was reconnecting. So I hope that the it was fine, but we'll see. Any messages or insights for my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Ten of Wands in reverse. Makes sense with the frog energy being here. Because that is like dropping burdens, dropping things that have been weighing you down, holding you up, going into new cycle, moving into the dolphin energy. Interesting, we do have a I knew it. I knew that three of swords is gonna be right there. This this can be this can be drama. This can also be information that's coming through because someone's seeking out healing. May I just heard justice, maybe even seeking out justice. So again, just be mindful. Two of Wands. Interesting. That landed on the unicorn and the dolphin energy. So it landed on you. Um, I feel like a choice has been made. I don't feel like you're at a crossroads. You might have been stuck at a crossroads for a bit. And if you were, it's because you needed to do some clearing here. You need to do some emotional releasing um, to alleviate you of that. And even then, with all this psychic energy that's coming through to you, uh, you're going to know which way to go. You're going to know which way to go. Any other messages or insights from my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. The moon. I feel like that's a lot of the psychic energy. Um, I keep feeling like someone, someone or many people have some stuff they want to say to you, and I feel like you're almost too insulated for them to reach you. Or you're too busy doing you, minding your own business, right? But with the moon coming out, I do feel like it speaks again to the psychic support, the intuitive support that you have here to understand what moves you need to make. That also goes aligned with the fox, right? Fox knows how to move and adapt like on a whim to move very fast if need be. And you're right on point. You have the eye. You got the eye. interesting sometimes we know what we want by knowing what we don't 
with the Three of Pentacles in reverse being there. <coughs> You're moving away from anything that just can't get, get its footing. <coughs> not going to invest in trying to co-create anything that's not aligned to you is how this is coming across. Yeah. That could even be faulty uh, plans, just, you know, faulty plans, faulty relationships, friendships. But yeah, anything that's not aligned to you, it's like you just know it, you feel it, and it's like you're moving accordingly. And you're really able to do this even better after you've gone through some sort of emotional clearing, cleansing, purging. Any other messages or insights, my water signs, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Wow, a lot going on for, for our dolphins here. Two fours. Four of Wands and the Four of Pentacles. It's touching the black egg. Water signs. Whoever's attached to this black egg, I'm about to just look at it specifically, but whoever's attached to the black egg, it, oh, it has this feeling like your back has been turned to them. Like you're definitely the Two of Wands energy. You're looking forward, you're making moves here and you're doing it again with this like psychic support. And then what's like behind it, it was over here, the Four of Wands and the Four of Pentacles. And this is touching the black egg. Like someone's like, mm, like that, like holding on. Holding on, holding on, holding on. You're not holding on. Someone's holding on to a Four of Wands. But I think it's like they're not they're not saying anything though. And a four of pentacles wouldn't. A four of pentacles would not be saying anything. A four of pentacles would just be sitting. But it's the throat chakra card. So they want to say stuff. There, there's there's truth they want to relay. Interesting. It's the cups on the bottom. I feel like you're off to find a new Four of Wands. Four of Wands is just stability. That's all it is. It's just stability and foundations that we create. That's why it also represents marriages and relationships. And that's why it also represents households, jobs. It's just foundations that you create um, within your reality with other people. And you're at the two. <laughs> and you're at the two. And you're so off being a dolphin and letting your intuition guide you, your higher mind guide you that I think you're going to find it, whatever it is for you. But someone's definitely holding on to you. They're trying to, and maybe more than one person's trying to hold on to you. Any other messages or insights, my water signs? Yeah. Justice in reverse, and they feel like it's unfair. Overall, magician in reverse. Mm. Wow. Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. That was weird how that came out. Okay, I see. Water signs. Magician in reverse with the hanged man, ten of pentacles in reverse, and the nine of cups in reverse. Whoever you've turned your back on, and I do feel like for a lot of you it's multiple, maybe, maybe at least two or three. Um, it could just be one. They're very disappointed. They're very disappointed. They they feel like this is unfair. Um, they're still holding on to this I idea. They're still holding on to what it is they want, even though they're not like speaking on it. But your your back is turned, and you're already on to, to to new things here. I I gotta clarify more of this for you water signs because there's a lot going on in your in your reading here. I'm gonna use actually let's use this one. Let's use the Kipper Lenormand combo. Can I get a card for the octopus? Can I get a card for the octopus, please? My water signs, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Can I get a card for the octopus? Imprisonment. Like we literally were speaking on imprisonment. Can I get another card for the octopus, please? Ooh, and the sun. The octopus is an energy of feeling kept away, kept away from opportunities, kept away from abundance, kept away even from money, potentially. 
Water signs, you might have struggled with these feelings yourself, but once you did this emotional cleansing, you're completely liberated and free from it. Now, if you freed yourself, there could be people that were, you know, misery loves company, that were aligned to that feeling of, I can't have what I want, or I can't have new beginnings, or I can't have stability, or what have you, and then they're still kind of suffering and being left behind, and they might they might have some issues and feel like it's unfair. Um, but that's, that's circulating around the octopus. It's just feelings of lack. It's feelings of lack. Uh, it's one of the four pentacles. Tell me more about this individual pulling on water signs or individuals. Tell me about the four pentacles. So we have a uh, woman with the clock. Clock is about divine timing. So there's a feminine energy attached to that four of pentacles. The clock, like I said, it speaks of divine timing. So let's see what else is going on here with the four of pentacles. Ooh, illusion. Mm. Illusion, illusion, illusion. So water signs, whoever this is, regardless of their gender, they're coming across as expectant. Um, female energy is about receiving. And then the clock being there speaks of, you know, this this energy this person is reflecting on, like, like it's like a timing thing. Like, maybe water sign will come back or um, things are going to change, et cetera. But the mask, there's illusion there. False person, yeah. Um, they might be in denial here, but again, that's because they're disappointed. They're disappointed at how something went. Tell me more about the Four of Pentacles. My water signs. Family room. So it could be somebody who uh, was close to you. It could even be a family member or someone you lived with. This, this is also a timeline card. I believe it's 24 hours to two weeks. It's the fastest timeline card, but I believe two weeks is the main timeline for that card. Interesting. Can I get a card for the Two of Wands here? Can I get a card for the Two of Wands for my water signs? Mature woman. Okay. Can I get a card for the Two of Wands? Beautiful with the star. This is you, water signs. Six of Cups energy with the star. The star is literally like the same kind of star in the tarot, tarot deck. It's, I also call it like my compass card. It's heading in the right direction, heading in a direction that also has a sense of fate or destiny. It's spiritually led, spiritually guided, and that is where you're at. So you see what I'm saying? It's like, you've definitely clearly been leaving a person or people behind. Um, and there is this feeling of not fair, not fair, not fair. Some of you have also been breaking your own inner demons of getting out of this mindset of certain things aren't meant for you. Certain things are meant for you, water signs. Whatever's meant for you is meant for you, right? Um, but in doing so, you might have also left behind people who had the same feeling or same thoughts, can even have been your actual family. All right, let's see if any other messages want to come out with these cards, and then we're going to move on. signs oh jesus another timeline card god where to start all right so we're gonna start here so <laughs> the cards stop running away from me we have thief with pathway the dice and sudden wealth all coming out here and this was attached to prison in prison with the with the sun card like i said you might have more than a couple people or more than one person feeling like you left them behind in something this is feeling like um how do i want to say it losing losing at a gamble for success is how that feels pathway just speaks of literally like a journey playing out it also speaks of a time it's a timeline card of two years up to two years I think it's like six months to two years, something like that. So however that resonates for you, it doesn't have to resonate. It could have been two years back, two years away from now. But anyway, and DICE is about risk and sudden wealth. Like this is literally like gambling for a big payoff, right? 
but this is feeling like opportunities of that have been taken away. Um, and you might have missed out on opportunities before in the past water signs because of this own self loaning belief of the octopus, but you've worked through that. You've released that with this emotional clearing. But in doing so, you could have left people behind who've also been who've also experienced that or who are still experiencing this. Um, there could have also been a person or people that have like tried to like take a risk or take a chance with you, and then you moving on doing your thing is like leaving them in the lurch, or they they could be seeing it that way. Okay, um, then. We had message of concern with change and the moon. Message of concern literally speaks of getting information about some sort of change or shift or pivot with the eight of cups with the moon that water signs, most likely this is information coming out that it was also circular and justice in reverse um, that you've made some choices here after doing some clearing, some healing, eight of cups, you're moving on to the 10, you're moving on to whatever four of wands awaits you, but it is you trying to do what is best for you and your path here with the star card, okay? The last thing that came out, judication and the lilies with the king of swords. Judication can be a divorce card. It also is my mediation card where spirit comes in and intervenes a little bit like temperance actually. Coming in with lilies, lilies is a spiritual card. It also speaks of sensuality, but it is about divinity and the king of swords was attached to the feminine in the collective reading here. Um, this this feels like, um, how do I want to say? How do I want to say this? <sighs> Resolution. This actually feels like justice, which is interesting. Because this card speaks of divinity. Adjudication speaks of mediating a conflict. This feels like justice to me. It could even be a divorce and you're freeing yourself via a divorce, right? Feeling trapped, feeling imprisoned, wanting something new. Took a gamble on something, hoping for a payoff. It didn't work out. And there's like years attached to the timeline here. So it definitely could be speaking of divorce for you. But the message that is concerning the people or person left behind is that there's a change and you are liberated. Now, overall, we got the man with the Ace of Cups. Wow. Wow. Man, great fortune, thoughts, great male and official person. This is an energy of how can I take action to get what I want and be the person I need to be or accomplish something. Official person can be like an emperor energy, but I also look at it as like something becoming official, right? Achieving something, right? Of great fortune speaks of abundance, but this is like very self-reflective energy as well. Um, and I do feel like this is aligned to you, water sign. Yeah. Wow. Made me dizzy. All right, moving on. That was a lot, that gave me a headache. All right. Hmm. Just clear on the board. Oh, that was weird. I just felt my head go. It's <laughs> like, so, oh, that's a strange sensation. Mm. Last but not least, my earthy kins. Oh. Hi, earth signs. Hello, Cappies, Tauruses, Virgos. Let's get into your read. Any messages or insights from my earth signs? Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Buffalo, okay. Excuse me. 
Buffalo is kind of like a tower card, but it's it's a, a positive. It's a positive tower. It's being able to get through changes, unexpected events with grace, with ease, um, with acceptance, with peace, and coming out the other side. And also, uh, traditionally, Buffalo is a good omen of abundance and blessings. Mm. It, there's this feeling or signs that things are finally going your way. Things are getting a little easier. That's interesting because they're showing me the Wheel of Fortune. What seem, what like circumstances that seem like you have to move mountains, it's like taking a walk in the park. Things are just aligning perfectly for you. It's almost like the, 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 the way is being paved. Uh, yeah, it's like things are moving out of your way so that you can do what you got to do. Yeah, it just feels like you're in flow. It feels like spirit's working with you. It's nice. It's a nice energy. Especially if you're surrendering to it. Because it almost feels like this energy of feeling like things are, are getting easier. Things are getting easier. Things are getting easier because you're not fighting anymore. It's like there's you've relinquished control. You've moved into a place of flow and surrender and just like, sh shit is what it is. I just got to flow with it. I just got to roll with it. And as you do, you start to actually be able to navigate situations really easily with less effort that's very cool any other messages or insights from my earth signs <laughs> vulture death magic basically scorpio god the colors alone matchy matchy vulture I, I definitely have this feeling like something happened something happened something is over something has ended and it's like you're kind of forced to just adapt that's literally how it feels you're forced to adapt you're forced to flow Whatever has come to an end, whatever has changed in your life, it, it's forced you. And as it's forced you to serve, it's funny because it's like it's forcing you to get out of force, <laughs> right? Um, you're also really moving away from that feeling of needing to control things. Interesting. Didn't expect this to come out. Moth. Moth is an attractive energy. The moth being drawn to the flame. There's something unexpected about this moth energy. Hold on. I want to slow this down a little bit because I just got another message with the buffalo and the vulture. It almost has this feeling like spirit is pushing you along a path. Yeah, I keep hearing force, 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 force. Yeah, earth signs. If something came to an end unexpectedly or in a way that just kind of was surprising, that's because you're being pushed out the door. Spirit is literally like, yeah, it's time. Yeah. Spirit is like, come on, earth sign. Get your butt up. Time to go. Time to go. Time for this. Time for this part of your reality to be over. Um, it literally has a nudge, 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 like shoving you out the door. Kind of reminds me of like when you're dragging a dog to the vet and they're like, like dead weight on the floor, butt on the floor. Spirit's like, nope, come on. Um, and you stop fighting. At some point, you just stop fighting. You could have also just had so many towers at like one after the other where you're just like, okay. Oh. That's over now. Two zero zero two o'clock exactly in the dawn of my crazy clock. I'm like, okie dokie. <laughs> I'm going then. And then this moth energy kicks in. Something. I feel like something hits you. Like, you go through a change. You're flowing. You're adapting. You're trying to find your way. You're focused on that. Something or someone just... To the earth sign drops into your face drops into your reality or like it's so drawn to you it's like a magnet like there's no avoiding what's coming there yeah ooh, there's no avoiding what's coming it doesn't feel bad it doesn't feel negative it just feels surprising <laughs> you know it's like that that kind of a reaction hawk spirits got their eye on you guiding you as well Really? Throat chakra energy again with the black egg. Your colors this week are signed black and purple, apparently. Black and purple. And then we've got this, which is funny, right? Because I was feeling like you're not even engaged in the moth. But the rest of your cards are black and purple. <laughs> anyway, so unexpected communication is what this feels like to me. Or an unexpected encounter, unexpected circumstance, and you're forced to be in this place of communication. You're forced to speak on your truth and like utilize these skills of communicating from, from higher wisdom.
Any other messages or insights? Crocodile, more black. Coming over with a buffalo and vulture. It feels like the moth comes in just as you're coming off of whatever this shift is. This is definitely some sort of an ending, some sort of change that is saying something is over, something's done, get your butt out of that situation. And you're kind of forced out of it and you do surrender. And it's like Crocodile is just saying, it's like, there's a moment when you start coming off of the like, the initial shock of whatever this ending is, right? As like you're adapting, the more you come down, you're adapting, you're adapting, you're adapting. And then, oh, bah, out of nowhere, the moth comes out. And it's like, what is this? It feels like a person. I mean, I feel like it's got to be a person. Um, or a circumstance where someone comes at you and is like shocking you with something. But it feels like it actually comes after the buffalo vulture. It's almost like tower to the next tower. But that second tower with the moth, it doesn't feel bad. It just feels like it's a lot. And I keep getting this feeling of like, you're forced to communicate, but it's like in a way where you, you gotta rely on these skills. Higher mind, higher wisdom. Are you being asked to speak? I'd be getting a, an opportunity to, to speak, like to someone, presentation, someone special maybe a celebrity i don't know it's it's weird it's like it's like what is going it's, it's literally like a shock like is this real life right now overall we have the wolf oh anxiety mm. a lot of earth energy for my earthy kittens which is good yeah earth signs it's like something ends for you this could even be purely work related because I'm feeling like work vibes or like needing to step up to the plate for something. Something ends and you're like, oh, dang. All right. Well, time to adapt to that. You're adapting. You're coming off of the shock. You're getting more settled. You're integrating whatever this change is. And I feel like so out of nowhere, an opportunity falls in your lap. And the opportunity, I feel like, is to get you to be a wolf, to move into this place of leader, leader, elder even. I keep getting this, like, we want to hear you speak, or we need you to go do this, we need you to speak. Like, like whatever this opportunity is, it's, it's gonna make you be seen, and it's gonna ask you to, like, go into, like, this next opportunity, this next role. And the mouse, man, you get anxious. <laughs> you get real anxious real quick about it. Why is it triggering? It's triggering for you. If this isn't a job opportunity to speak and to be like a leader or elder, I feel like it's literally somebody coming at you who like cannot help themselves, who cannot help themselves and come at you. And it's triggering for you. And maybe they're provoking, maybe they're maybe they're trying to be provoking maybe they're trying to be triggering and it's like practice the wisdom practice the wisdom practice the wisdom as the wolf and it's hard you're having a hard time with it so that's just how it's coming across your earth signs um whether you're asked to step into a role that requires more of you and it's just triggering you it's making you anxious others of you it's like you're already coming off of a big change and then someone just comes at you because they cannot control themselves. And you're like, how do I woo-saw this situation? <laughs> how do I woo-saw this? How do I do that? Uh, let's go ahead and pull some cards for you. I'm going to use the little mini Rider weight. Interesting. World and Ace of Cups. Yeah, whatever this ending is with the Vulture and the Buffalo, it just feels like it's time. It just feels like it's time. It might be a little hard, it might be a little sad, but it's time. Any other messages or insights? My Earth signs, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo.
Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Ace of Cups. Opportunity. Like I said, an opportunity just hits you out of nowhere. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Um, I keep feeling like there's a person attached to this. And maybe it's a person who has emotions for you. But whatever this opportunity is, you know, these opportunities, these cards, like, you know, that's actually the hand of God coming in to gift something. Um, it's up to you, whatever you want to do with this. I just feel like it overwhelms you. Any other messages or insights from my earth signs? Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Six of Swords and the Ace of Cups. It's coming your way. I don't even feel like you're the Six of Swords. I don't feel like you move towards it. I feel like it's coming towards you. Which again, kind of has a feeling of a person attached to it. It could be somebody who's known you already. But whatever they're presenting, it's new. It is new. It's nothing you've like heard before, been been asked of before, been shown before. Someone may even travel to you literally to present this to you. Feels like a big deal. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, someone's coming to give you a cup. It's shocking. I can't get over the, the feeling of it's shocking. Because again, the moth, it's a magnet. It's not like you go to a coffee shop and someone sees you and they're like, hey, what's your name? Have you been here before? It's not like that. Like, this is somebody who knows you. This is somebody who's like had their eye on you in some way, shape, or form. That's also why I feel like for some of you, it could even be like a business thing or work thing. Like maybe they've like, you know, maybe you're really good in your field and like people know about you or whatever in your particular field or they know the company you work for and they like, they've been waiting for an opportunity and it's literally you're getting out of one. One has like ended and it's like, oh, earth sign is open. Let's go grab the earth sign. It can like literally be like that. And of course, with the cups and the moth and everything too, could this also be like a romantic thing? Yeah, it could be. But what it's doing is it's bringing out the wolf in you. That's what it's doing. It's like, it's asking you to step into the wolf if you want to, if you want this opportunity. If you want this opportunity or if this opportunity is too overwhelming, like how to be the wolf to navigate this on how to decline or even how to respond to it. I'll say to respond, how to respond to it. The wolf is wisdom. The wolf is leader. The wolf is elder. The wolf is alpha, right? It's a maturity. Any other messages or insights? Six of Wands in a verse coming over here with the buffalo and the vulture. Like I said, something's done. Something has closed out recently for you. Magician in a verse. Interesting. Six of Wands in a verse, Magician in a verse. Whatever is ending initially that sends you on this course, um, I feel like you really tried. I feel like you tried to hold on to it. And I think that's why spirit's coming in to usher you out because it's like, stop. They're saying, stop, stop, stop. You're not meant to. Any other messages or insights from my earth signs? Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Oh, that's interesting. Six of Pentacles just came out with Magician Reverse and the Six of Wands in Reverse. Six of Pentacles is help. It's assistance. You may have been trying to help people. Yeah, that's interesting. You may have been trying to help people. I just keep getting a generosity from this. It was wrapped up in whatever it is that you're leaving. People may even, may even be helping you like transition away from whatever is ending into something new for yourself. But I feel like 
what was circulating around the, the thing that was over is six of pentacles like you were the one that was giving which is very earth sign it is very earth sign Any other messages or insights from my earth signs pertaining to this spread? So the moon just came out and it landed over here with this set, over with the buffalo and the vulture. Um, there was a, there was a lot of confusion and unknown revolving around the situation that's ending. But again, spirits ushering you out, so just let them. And then over here with the moth, <laughs> King of Pentacles in reverse and the Two of Pentacles in reverse. Remember, the moth is, is this this energy coming at you, literally coming at you, <laughs> coming at the earth sign. <laughs> and here you are, like e -e -e, triggered. <laughs> Sorry, you gotta laugh. You're trying to figure out what you want to do, what you need to do here. It's interesting that the King of Pentacles is in reverse, is activated within you because that's part of the energy we're clearing collectively, right? And so you are clearly getting triggered. And so there, there probably needs to be a perceptional shift here. What is getting triggered within you? Because part of it is attached to this program that we're breaking away from, this program of mine, possession, me versus them, the war energy, right? kind of want to look into that overall we have seven of cups in reverse beautiful with the king of swords you're going to have clarity on this and it's going to come from the higher mind remember what was attached to the higher mind the king of swords that detachment moving detaching from the emotions right and just seeing things for what they are looking at the ego for what it is and for the triggers that are coming up there that's going to help you figure out how to decide on this um whatever your decision is <clears throat> hold on a second because whatever comes in here whatever comes at you that that program will be triggered and it's almost like you kind of gotta like fight with yourself a little bit on climbing out of that um to make the right choice for you whatever it is but the fact that it's king of swords six of swords ace of swords nothing about this feels bad to me i'm just speaking intuitively but this feels pretty good to me but it freaks you out so <laughs> Anyway, good luck, Earth Signs. I hope you guys really enjoyed this reading. I really enjoyed doing this for you. I hope you guys have an amazing week and a great night, and I'll see you guys soon, okay? Take care.